Okay. Good morning, everyone. So we are moving to the next chapter, work, energy, and power. So I'll start off with a concept from vectors. Vector, vector was actually learned in the third chapter, motion in a plane, right? And this topic used to belong to that chapter, but like a couple of years back, they put it here, dot product of vectors. Dot product of vectors. How do we multiply vectors? We learn addition of vectors. How are vectors added? We use a law called parallelogram law of vector addition. Correct. Parallelogram law of vector addition. This is vector A. This is vector B. How are we going to find the resultant of these two? Complete the parallelogram. Draw the diagonal. Yes. That is called parallelogram law of vector addition. Yep. So you can add the vectors using parallelogram law. You can even subtract using parallel logger law. We learn subtraction also. The ray number law problem, if you remember. Okay. Dif dif difference of two vectors is also learned in the previous chapter. Okay. Now, we're going to see how we can multiply vectors. There are two ways to multiply. First one is called dot product of vectors. Dot product of vectors. It is also called scalar product for a reason. What is the reason? You know, the answer you're going to get is a scalar quantity. Okay, so when you take the dot product, dot product of what? Two vectors. One vector is multiplied with another vector. Got it? Okay, one vector is multiplied with another vector. The result will be a scalar. Result will not have a direction. Okay, such a multiplication is called scalar multiplication or dot multiplication. I'll tell you, look at this. I have a vector A. I have another vector B. So, what I'm going to take is A dot B. This is read like A dot B. A dot B means dot product of A and B. Dot product of A and B. What is its definition? The definition is modulus of A into modulus of B into cos of theta. Modulus of A into modulus of B into cos of theta. I'll tell you how to find it. Okay. Anyway, if this is vector A and if this is vector B, what is theta? The angle between them is called theta, dot product. Okay, so definition of dot product is what? Modulus of first vector into, modulus of second vector into, cos of the angle between the vectors. Got it. But we won't be using this formula quite often. Instead, we have a technique. I'll tell you. Look at this. I'm writing a vector here, a vector. A vector is equal to axi plus ayj plus a, Z, K. What are these guys? Who are these guys? A, X, A, Y, Z. They are called X component, Y component, and Z component respectively. Maybe like 2i plus 3i, 3j plus 4k. Those numbers, 2, 3, 4. Understood. They are components along X axis, tell me Krisha, Y axis, and Z axis, right? X axis, Y axis, Z axis. All right. So I have another vector, B vector. B vector. What is B vector? Similar way. It is bxi cap plus byj cap plus bzk cap. So I got two vectors. How to take the dot product? There is an easier technique. I'll tell you. Look at the green circled ones. They are components, right? Ax and bx, ay and by, az and bz. Just multiply them and add them up. Look at this. A dot b is what? Ax bx plus ay by plus a, Z, B, Z. That is how you take the dot product. Okay, dot product of two vectors. For example, I'll do one question. Look at this. I have a vector A is equal to 2i plus 3j plus 4k. And another vector B vector is equal to 3i plus 5j plus 7k. What is the dot product of these two? Ah, ah yes. You can grow, you can multiply, right? Tell me that three. You know, tell me Kuti. You know, this is what? Two and three, no? I components are multiplied. Right, two into three, two into three. I components are multiplied. Can I give you time? Two into three, right? Plus, tell me J components three and five, three into five, plus K components four into seven. They are multiplied and added. Two into three, six, three into five, fifteen, plus twenty-eight. That is equal to forty-nine. The answer is forty-nine. Got it. So when you take dot product, you better use this equation, this technique. All right. This is used only for definition. Okay, so A dot B's definition is what? Modulus of A into modulus of B into cos of theta. Modulus of A, modulus of B, cos theta. I'll tell you how to find the modulus. It's easy. Okay, 
Second one, I told you if a vector is axi plus ayj plus azk, b vector is equal to bxi plus byj plus bzk, a dot b is ax bx plus ay by plus az bz. Got it. And I'm going to tell you a couple of properties. Number one, number one, it is very, very important. Look at this. I wrote a dot b as what? a dot b as mod a mod b cos theta. So what is cos theta from this one then? Huh? Cos theta is equal to a dot b by, that will come to denominator, right? Modulus of a into modulus of b. Am I correct? From which you can find theta. Theta will be, you will be taking cos to this side. So you will be writing it as cos inverse. This is called inverse. Cos inverse of a dot b by modulus of a into modulus of b. Cos inverse of a dot b by modulus of a into modulus of b. That is how you find, that is how you find the angle between vectors. I will do a sample question. Look at this. See this. I have a vector a, i cap plus j cap plus k cap. Find the angle with the y axis. They would say y axis. You have to find the angle between this vector. It's a previous question from your school paper. Okay. This vector and y axis. You know, if I say y axis, what does it mean? It is j cap, right? Oh no. Look at this. There are three vectors. This is x axis, y axis, and z axis, right? X is to the right. Y is up. Z is coming out of the board, right? Correct. Who is the characteristic vector here? Unity vector is i cap on x axis. Y axis it is j cap. Z axis it is k cap. So whenever I say y axis, you must think of j cap. Got it? So y axis I write it as j cap. Now what I am going to find out is, tell me the angle between them, right? Angle between them, right? So what is the equation for angle? Cos inverse. Tell me a dot b divided by, tell me, mod a into mod b. See this cos inverse, what is a dot b? i component into i component. Tell me what is i component? One. i component 1 i, right? One. Uh, so 1 into i component is 0. No i component, right? One. Correct. Uh, j component is what? 1 into j component here is what? 1j, right? One. Plus. Tell me, k component, k component, that three, 1 into k component is 0, divided by, modulus I will tell, tell you how to take it, root of first number square plus second number square plus third number square. Okay, so this is 1i, right? This is 1j, right? 1k. So, 1 square plus 1 square plus 1 square. You learn this in vectors, how to take the modulus. Do into, into modulus of b. b means only 1 is there, no? A root of 1 square. So finally, what do we get? Cos 1 into 0, 0. 1 into 0, 0. So we get cos inverse of 1 into 1, 1. This is root 3. Yeah. 1 plus 1 plus 1, 3. Cos inverse 1 by root 3 will be the final answer. Got it? That's a previous question. Cos inverse 1 by root 3. How to find the angle between two vectors? Got it? I took the toughest question. Usually, they will give you two vectors. But I said like one vector and y axis. Got it. That's a complex question in a way. Got it. Got it. In one more point, we will do the questions. What if two vectors are perpendicular? Two vectors are perpendicular. I told you if two vectors are perpendicular, theta will be what? 90, right? 90, right? Two vectors are perpendicular. Theta will be 90 now. 90. So, cos 90 will be what? 0. So, that is how you check for perpendicularity. There was a question once. Check whether the following vectors are perpendicular. How do we check? Just take the dot product and see if it is 0. If it is 0, they are perpendicular. If it is not 0, they are not perpendicular. Got it? So, that's all about the fundamental ideas. We'll do questions now. Okay. So, I'll tell you one more time. We have, we are looking at vectors here. We are starting off with the concept of vectors. Vector addition was done. Vector subtraction was done. Vector multiplication. All right. Vector division is not there. It is not defined. It is not defined. You can't divide vectors. Okay. But vector multiplication is there. In fact, there are two ways to multiply. This is scalar multiplication. 
There is another kind of multiplication, vector multiplication. You will, you will come in the next chapter. All right, rotational motion. All right. So this is scalar product because the answer is going to be a scalar quantity. Okay. Vector product answer will be a vector quantity. Okay. Uh, that is A cross B. A cross. You put a cross mark. We will see it later. Okay. This is A dot B. A dot B is mod A mod B cos theta. That is the definition of dot product. Mod A, say it again. Mod A mod B cos theta. You will need this throughout class 11 and class 12. Okay. Almost all chapters have numerical applications of this. A dot B is equal to mod A mod B cos theta. Got it. And I told you about this. This is how you take it. Ax, Bx plus Ay, By plus Az, Bz. All right. You multiply the I components, multiply the J components, multiply the K components, then add them up. You're going you're gonna to get the dot product. Got it. Then I told you about this. How to find the angle? Cos inverse A dot B divided by modulus of A into modulus of B. Cos inverse A dot B by modulus of A into modulus of B. Got it. So that is how you find it. And one more last thing here, if two vectors are perpendicular, their dot product is zero. All right, dot product is zero. I was surprised all of a sudden I couldn't, I didn't see you, so I was surprising you. Okay, when I turn back, I didn't see you. Right, so anyway, let's start writing, start writing. Okay, write this, write this. All of you online understood this, write heading dot product. Ro dot product in bracket, scalar product. dot product or scalar product. All of you online understood until here? Okay, right. So dot product or scalar product, right? Dot product or scalar product. You can write dot product dot product is defined as dot product is defined as A dot B. A dot B. Basically, you are trying to find ways to multiply vectors. That's it. A dot B. A dot B is equal to what? One. Modulus of A or magnitude of A into magnitude of B into cos of theta. Put this in a box. Cos of theta. This is by definition. Cos of theta. Oh, theta is angle between A vector and B vector, okay. Sir, sir, I see. I uh, think that uh, certain cos cos from cos zero has no meaning at all. Who says? Sir, the problem is that uh, if the problem is cos from cos zero, it has no meaning. Ah, that's fine. That's fine. Okay, a dot b is equal to cos alone. He was saying that cos alone does not have any meaning, right? Cos theta, right? So this is what a dot b is equal to mod a mod b cos theta. Okay, right? Mod a mod b cos theta. Now, how to take it? Just write this. Let a vector be equal to ax i cap plus a y j cap plus a z k cap. So we got three components, right? A x a y a z. There are three components for this. And similar way, write b vector. B vector is b x i cap plus b y j cap plus B is at K cap. So I got two vectors here, right? Their components are AX, AY, and AZ. And BX, BY, BZ. Just so, just some random numbers. Got it? Like 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, and all, no? And tell me, A dot B. How is that mathematically defined? Mathematically taken. I told you to multiply AX and BX, right? And then AY and BY, AZ and BZ, like that. Write it AX BX plus AY BY plus AZ BZ. Put that out in a box. AX BX plus AY BY plus AZ BZ. Okay. Okay, finish this. Ax, Bx plus Ay, Bv plus Az, Bz. Okay, right. right. Below which you can write 
you can write not number one. If two vectors are perpendicular, if two vectors are perpendicular, tell me what you're going to write. A dot B. Tell me, Jocelyn. A dot B will be zero, right? Correct, Karni. Oh. If two vectors are perpendicular, theta will be 90. So A dot B will be modulus of A into modulus of B into cos of 90. Cos 90 is going to be 0. Correct. Cos 90 will be 0. Okay. So if two vectors are perpendicular, their dot product must be 0. Okay. Two vectors are perpendicular, their dot product must be 0. Okay. That is the first point. Not number 2. Not number 2. A dot B. Write it one more time. Mod A, mod B, cos theta. And get that cos theta on one side. What are you going to get? A dot B over mod A, mod B. Theta is equal to cos inverse of. You can learn this equation by heart if possible, or you can formulate when you need. Cos theta, theta is equal to cos inverse of A dot B divided by mod A into mod B. Cos inverse of A dot B into mod A into mod B. Cos inverse of A dot B by mod A into mod B. Okay, theta is equal to cos inverse of A dot B by mod A into mod B. Now, one more not there. One more not there, not number three. Not number three. I dot I. I dot I. Can you tell me what it is? This is unity vector, right? Unity vector, right? Ah. Modulus of I, let us do it together. Modulus of I into, modulus of I into cos theta. What is modulus of i? i is called unit vector, no? unit vector, right? Unity means what? One. Correct. Unity means one. Pretty. Ah, modulus is one, right? So this is one into one cos of zero. Why zero? Because both are same, no? i and i are along the same direction, right? Same direction, right? i is on x-axis. The other i is also on x-axis. What is the angle between i and i? Zero. That will be zero. i is on x-axis, i is on x-axis, theta will be zero. Cos zero will be one. What have you got now? You got i dot i is equal to one. By the same logic, I could write j dot j is equal to one. Or k dot k is equal to one. What does it mean? Unit vector, like unit vectors. Like. They are called like vectors. Okay. Like unit vectors, when taken dot product, will give you what? Like unit vectors, when taken dot product, will give you 1. Am I correct? Like unit vectors. i dot i is equal to 1. j dot j is equal to 1. k dot k is equal to 1. Okay? i dot i is equal to 1. j dot j is equal to 1. k dot k is equal to 1. Okay. Now, number four, the other one also we can write. Number four, what if you take i dot j, different unit vectors, modulus of i into modulus of j into cos of theta, modulus of i is one, modulus of j is one, ah, 90. Why is it 90, Karnik? Because i is on x axis, j are perpendicular, j is on y axis. Correct. I is on x axis, j is on y axis. Theta will be 90, right? I and j are, yes, yes. This is x axis, this is y axis. I e cap here, j cap here. Look at the angle. 90 degree, right? So, cos 90 is 0. 
So what have you got here? That is equal to zero. So finally you can write I cross J will be zero. On the same lines you could write J cross K will be zero or K cross I will be zero. Unlike unit vectors, like unit vectors when taken dot product will give you one. Unlike unit vectors when taken cross product will give you zero. Like unit vectors when taken cross product will give you one. Unlike unit vectors are going to give you zero. Understood this all of you? We'll do a couple of questions. Okay. Right. Question number one. Question number one. Question number one. Yeah. Question number one. Find the dot product of. We have to do four questions. Find the dot. Make it quick. Find the dot product of A is equal to I plus 3J plus 5K and B is equal to 2I plus 4J plus 6K. Find the dot product of A is equal to I plus 3J plus 5K and B is equal to 2I plus 4J plus 6K. No, no, only one way. Angle is not given, no. So you take the direct method. So A dot B will be what? X components are multiplied, right? Ah, X component here is, it is 1I, right? Simply writing I means 1I, correct? 1i, right? Into what is i component here? 2 plus j component is 3, j component is 4, k component is 5, k component is 6, 5 into 6, 2 plus 12 plus 30, 42, answer is 44. Look at that. Result is a scalar quantity. You started with the vectors. Correct. But you ended up with a scalar quantity. That is why it is called scalar product. Okay. Right. Question number two. All of you finished? Everyone online? Ah, yes, Vishal. Very good. Right. Question number two. Find the angle between Find the angle between a vector is equal to i plus j plus k and the y axis. Okay. a plus j plus k, i plus j plus k and y axis. So write the vectors here. What is our first vector? a vector is equal to, tell me, i plus j plus k. That is given, right? Correct. First vector is given. Am I correct? Yeah. Second vector is what? Second vector is, uh, they say y axis. Y axis means uh, you got to put j cap. If they say x axis, put i cap. If it is z axis, put k cap. Okay. Right. Now you know how to take it. Cos theta is equal to, or theta is equal to. We have an equation for theta. Cos inverse a dot b divided by Modulus of A into modulus of B. Cos inverse A dot B over mod A into mod B. Cos inverse A dot B over mod A into mod B. Okay. So let us put the values. Put the values. Tell me what is cos inverse A dot B. How to take A dot B? Tell me, Trisha, I component 1, I component 0, 1 into 0 plus, correct. J component is 1, J component is 1, 1J, one 1J. One so 1 into 1. K component is 1, K component is 0, divided by, you know how to find the modulus, right? Root of first number, this is 1I, one 1J, one 1K. One so all squares, 
1 square plus 1 square plus 1 square. I am done with modulus of A. Modulus of B is what? That is only 1 square. Right, that's it. 1 into 0, 0. 1 into 0, 0. So you're going to get cos inverse of uh, 1 by, yes. This is root 3, right? Uh, yeah. 1 by root 3. Cos inverse of, yeah, you can leave it like this. Yeah. Cos inverse 1 by root 3. Theta is equal to, that's a previous question from your school paper. Theta is equal to cos inverse 1 by root 3. All of you understood this? Write the next question. Find the value of EX. Third question. Find EX if A is equal to I plus 3J plus 5K and B is equal to find X if find X if Huh, all right, sir. Find x if. So you got to find the f. What is the condition? A and b are perpendicular, right? They say a and b are perpendicular. Am I correct? A and b are perpendicular, right? Huh. A and b are perpendicular. So when you, the moment you see the word perpendicular, you should think about perpendicularity. Do you remember? Yeah. Correct. Since you can write, since a is perpendicular to b, they say that beforehand. Right. What do we know? Tell me that three. What do we know? A dot B will be zero. Correct. A dot B will be zero. If two vectors are perpendicular, their dot product must be zero. If two vectors are perpendicular, their dot product must be zero. Okay. Dot product. We learned it already. If two vectors are perpendicular, their dot product must be zero. So take the dot product. Take the dot product. Here it is one I, right? 1 into 2. Tell me one then. 1 into 2 plus. Then here it is 3. Here it is 4. So 3 into 4 plus. Here it is 5. For this one it is x. 5 into x is equal to 0. Okay. This is 2. 1 into 2. 2. 3 into 4. 12. Plus 5x is equal to 0. So 5x is equal to. 12 plus 2, 14, goes to the right side, minus 14. So x will be minus 14 by 5. 2.8? You can keep it like this. Uh, 2.8, that's fine. Minus 2.8. Understood? x is equal to minus 14.5. Understood? Okay, just one question. Huh. Because it is continuation of what we learned. You can write, check if a vector is equal to 2i plus 3j plus 4k and b vector is equal to 3i 3i plus 12j minus 10k. Make it 2. 2i are perpendicular. Yeah. Check if check if a vector is equal to 2i plus 3j plus 4k and b vector is equal to 2i plus 12j plus 10k are perpendicular. How do you check for perpendicularity? Ah, yes. You have to check what a dot b is. See if it is zero or not. If they if that's zero, they are perpendicular. If that's not, they are not. All right. So tell me, tell me how you can do this. You must take the dot product, isn't it? Right? No. Ah, dot product. How to take dot product? This is two, this is two. Two into two plus this is three and this is twelve. Three into twelve. Three into twelve plus. And this is four, this is minus ten. Four into minus ten. Tell me what you're going to get. Zero. 2 into 2, 4. 3 into 30, 12, 36. 30. Minus 40. That's going to be 0, right? Uh, A dot B is equal to 0. Means what? Therefore, uh, it's perpendicular. A dot B is 0 means, therefore, A must be perpendicular to B. Got it?
All of you understood this? Vector part is over. We will come back and do work energy part. Now let us see the notion of work here. Look at this. You know, you have, you have heard the word work before, but that work is different from the work we are going to define today. Okay, so in physics, work has an altogether different meaning. Okay, for example, when you have an exam, you say you have done a lot of work. That work is different. In physics, just imagine you are trying to push Mount Everest. The end of the day, somebody comes to you and says, you haven't done any work. Why? Will you agree? But in physics, it is true because work is zero as long as displacement is zero. No matter how hard you push, Mount Everest is not going to go anywhere, right? So displacement will be zero. Okay, so work's actual definition is force into displacement. Force into displacement. If displacement is zero, work done will be zero. Force into this definition you learned in class nine. Okay, so work done is in, it is not in normal sense, you know, in physics, we have a different meaning for work. Work is said to be done when a force causes a displacement. Okay, a displacement is essential for saying that a work has been done. Got it. And let me put a condition here. Look at this. I have a suitcase here. This is a trolley or something. Okay, right, a trolley. And you're pulling the trolley this way. You are, this is the handle of the trolley and you are applying a force in this direction. For example, you know, if you want the trolley to move, you hold the trolley this way and you are pulling it like this. Okay, so you're applying a force in this direction and you know that every vector can be split up into two components, isn't it? Right, what are the components? The component near to theta is called F cos theta and the component away from theta is called F sine theta, we learned it the other day, right? Whenever you have a vector, it can be split up into F cos theta and F sine theta. Okay, now let us redefine the concept of work. Tell me which component of force is doing work now? Later, later. Which component of force is doing work now? This component has no relevance now. Why? Because the box does not move up. The box is moving along this line, right? So look at the green line here. Look at the green line here. The displacement happens along the horizontal. The displacement happens along the horizontal, as you can see. Look at this. The displacement is along x-axis. Displacement is along x-axis. So this f cos theta along takes part in displacement, displacing the body, right? So I would rather write this as f cos theta into d. Now it looks like what? a, b cos theta. A, B, cos theta. You know what it is? A dot B, right? A dot B, right? Yeah, that is right. That is how you write it now. F dot B. Actually, this is what we learned the concept of dot product for. Got it. Dot product. Work is the dot product of force and displacement. W is equal to F dot D. I repeat this one more time. In class 9, you learn work as force into displacement. Now, today we are going to redefine it by introducing the angles. All right. So tell me, we are pulling the body with a force at an angle theta. Then there are two components. This is x component, f cos theta. The other is y component, f sine theta. All right. Only one component performs work now. Not, not the entire force. One part has no role. f sine theta has no role. f cos theta alone causes the body to displace, right? f cos theta is to the right. Even the displacement is to the right. So I can say, instead of F, I can say F cos theta into D. All right. And it is like A, B cos theta, which may be written as A dot B, F dot D. Let me tell you three scenarios. Number one, imagine, imagine, number one, zero less than theta less than 90. What does it mean? Zero less than theta less than 90 means theta value is in between zero and 90. 0 degree, 1 degree, 2 degrees, 3 degrees, 4 degrees, up to 89.9. Okay, 90 not included. Got it. For theta values ranging between 0 and 90, we can say, we can say that cos theta will be positive. Cos theta is positive because cos 0, positive. Cos 1, positive. Cos 2, positive. Cos 30, positive. 
cos 79 positive cos 89.99 positive all are positive right so in that case work done is also positive work done is positive look at this work done is positive because if cos theta is positive work done is also positive i can tell you the situations imagine you are pushing a body force is applied to the right even the displacement is also to the right theta is zero right work will be positive or imagine you are pulling a body f this way displacement is also this way theta is zero work is positive right okay let us take another scenario imagine a ball is rolling ball rolls to the ground right and friction acts opposite to it right correct what is the angle between them 180 degree right cos 180 is negative right cos 180 cos 180 is minus 1 work will be negative work will be negative so work done by friction in this case is negative or i can tell you another situation imagine a ball is going up displacement is up gravity is down force of gravity what is angle 180 degree right work done will be negative work done can be negative also work done can be zero also which is a previous question important one look at this look at this case this force is called centripetal force you remember you remember center seeking force okay whenever you have yesterday you saw that wine right in a glass being circled right okay circular motion always has a force to the center right force to the center and displacement is tangential angle is 90 degree right what will be the work done force into displacement into cos 90 that is equal to zero work done can be zero also work done can be positive work done can be negative work done can be zero also all right or another situation i can tell you imagine someone is carrying a suitcase overhead he walks to the right when he walks to the right the body also goes to the right but where is gravity previous question gravity is acting down okay angle is 90 degree work will be what fd cos 90 zero so point is very simple this is where the chapter starts in the reader work can be positive work can be negative or work can be even zero all right work is equal to zero got it that is the first point and second point i'll come to that there is a numerical that's a very important one which uses integration all right i'll tell you let us start writing all of you write this write this write heading work work okay now we have a box like a trolley or something all of you online understood this so you have a figure here where you apply a force f correct but that's making an angle theta right Okay, and there are two components. The near component is called cos component and the away component is called sine component, right? F cos theta and F sine theta. Okay, now, you can write, imagine a body, imagine a body, imagine a body, being pulled by a force f imagine imagine a body being pulled by a force f capital f imagine a body being pulled by a force f okay let's stop next line work is defined as this definition we learned in smaller classes work is defined as what's the equation for work vandana force into displacement right oh. work is equal to tell me Jocelyn, force into displacement work is defined as work is equal to force into displacement but remember you will take the relevant component only right not both the components we look at this component only of cos theta, right? Okay. You can even draw the displacement there. This blue arrow, the displacement. Okay, that is a displacement. So, you can write F cos theta 
into displacement density. That looks something similar to familiar to you, right? Because you just learned the product, AB cos theta. Correct. What is it, Kuti? This is A dot B, isn't it? F dot D. So work done is equal to F dot D. Put this in a box. This is the brand new definition for work. Huh. A dot B is AB cos theta. I took it as dot product, right? Ah, okay, okay, right. So you can write this and below which you can write unit. SI unit is joule. Work is measured in joule. And CGS unit is erg. One joule is 10 to the power 7 x. One joule would be equal to 10 to the power 7 x. 10 raised to 7 x would be called 1 joule. 10 to the power 7 x will be called 1 joules. 1 joule. No. 1 erg is 10 raised to minus 7 joules. Okay, inverse. Okay, 1 joule is 10 raised to 7 nerds. After 1, you have to put 7 zeros to the right. Okay. Now, let us write those cases. So, Special cases, right. Special cases. Number one, zero less than theta, less than 90. What does it mean? Theta value is in between zero and 90. That angle is called acute. Special cases. Oh, you can't read it? I'll write one more time. Okay, right. Special cases. My handwriting is too bad. Special cases, okay. Thanks. Special cases. Zero less than theta less than 90. Okay. Case number one. What does it mean? L theta value lies in between 0 and 90. That angle is called acute angle, right? Acute. All right. Ah. Let us write. In that case, cos theta is positive. Cos theta is positive. Cos acute angle, cos theta will be positive always. If cos theta is positive, you can say that work is also positive. You can write the example. A body pushed. When you push a body, body moves in the direction of push. Correct. Theta will be zero now. Right. A body pushed. A body pulled. You pull the body. Towards you, the body comes towards you, right? So, theta will be zero. Work is positive. Okay. A body pushed, a body pull. Normal cases are theta is always acute angle, acute angle. Okay. When you push the body, the body moves in the same direction, right? When you pull the body, the body moves in the same direction. Correct. Theta will be zero. Now, case number two. 90 less than theta, less than 180 means the angle is obtuse. Greater than 90 means obtuse. Hope you know it. Right. And in that case, cos theta what? Cos theta is negative for obtuse angles. Cos 91, cos 92, cos 93, cos 94, until cos 178, cos 179, cos 180. It's all negative, right? If that is all negative, you can say Work is also negative. So my point is very simple. Work is positive. Work is negative. Example you can write. Draw the figure. This is a ball. Ball rolling to the right. Displacement is to the right. Where is friction? Friction is opposite. Okay.
Work done by friction. No, the returning force work done will be negative. Returning force work done by friction. Okay. Negative value. Work is negative. It is because of friction. Yeah. Now, next one. You are throwing a ball up. The ball goes up. Displacement. And force of gravity is down. Okay. So you can write. Work done by gravity on a body moving up. Look at the angle. Angle is 180. Correct. Work done by gravity on a body moving up. Work done by gravity on a body moving up. Work done by gravity on a body moving up. Okay. Right. So last one, number three. So case number two, we wrote case number three. Number three, we can write theta is equal to 90. Theta is equal to 90. Work done will be cos 90 is 0. Work done cos theta will be 0. So work is therefore work is 0. Example, work done by centripetal force. Draw the figure. Centripetal force is always to the center. Displacement is always tangential. If you, if you lose break on a curve, you will go tangentially, right? Okay. Or if you tie a string to a stone and rotate it, if the string breaks, the stone will go tangentially, right? Or while sharpening a knife, the sparks would fly off tangentially. Direction is always tangential. Theta is how much? 90 degree, right? Work done will be F into D into cos theta. So work done by centripetal force will be centripetal force into displacement into cos 90, that is equal to 0. Work run can be 0. Oh. Okay. SSO, SSO is also fine. SSO is also fine, yeah. Fc into D into cos 90. Okay. Uh, the static friction can also occur like uh, the period below. Uh, there is also static friction. Static. Why do you say friction here? Uh, can it also occur static friction? Static. No, no. It is FS. Oh. Right. This is FC, right? Centripetal force. Centripetal force into displacement to cos 90. Okay. One last question here. All of you got this? Everyone online? I'll do one question. Listen, listen to me. Look at this. It's so important. Okay. Look at this. What is the difference between this force and this force? This force. Can you tell me? First force is a constant force, right? All the time and everywhere it is 2 Newton. For example, today it is 2 Newton. Tomorrow or even 100 years down the line, it is 2 Newton, right? It does not depend on time. It is not position dependent either. Here it is 2 Newton. In Dubai also it is 2 Newton, right? But what about this one? It depends on the location. X, X is there, no? When you put X is equal to 0, you get what? 3 into 0 square plus 2 into 0 plus 4 into 0 raised to 0. Got it? 
if, if you are at location 3, x equal to 3, 3 into 3 square plus 2 into 3 plus 4 into 3 raised to 0. If you are in New York, it is 3 into New York square plus 2 into New York plus 4 into New York raised to 0. Got it. So x is the location or the position coordinate. Got it. So this is called a constant force and this is called a variable force. There is this question which is sure to come. So, so, so important. I'll tell you. In the case of variable force, you know, work done is given by integral f dx. Integral f dx. I'll tell you what it is. It is actually the symbol integration. It is actually, it actually is yes, summation. Over the years, over hundreds of years, this has got stretched a bit and now it looks like this. Okay, the symbol for integration is basically summation. You are adding. Okay, there is a technique to do integration. Technique to do integration. Abhinav, right. I'll tell you, there are equations. For example, integration of x raised to n dx. And in the last batch, some of, some of us asking what is the meaning of dx. dx does not have a standalone meaning. It actually tells you to integrate with respect to dx. With respect to x. So it is, it is like, you know, if I could divide it, the symbol, what does this dot mean? Is it meaningful to ask such a question? No. When these dots and this line come together, you call it division, right? Correct. Or when you call these lines, these to call vertical and horizontal lines together will be called addition, plus. Correct. Or this is called into mark, multiplication, right? Similar way, this symbol along with the dx is asking you to integrate. Got it. Because I'm taking, I'm, I'm, I'm just saying in advance because don't ask me why that dx is there. Okay. In fact, what we are doing is you are integrating this guy, x raised to n. There is an equation for it. Integration of x raised to n dx is x to the power n plus 1 by n plus 1. So if it is integral x to the power 7 dx, tell me that three. In place of n, it is 7, right? Tell me the shot. x raised to 7 plus 1 by 7 plus 1. Integral of x raised to 11 dx is x raised to 11 plus 1 by 11 plus 1. Integral of 20 raised to x raised to 21 is x raised to 21 plus 1 by 21 plus 1. Got it. That is how you find the work done. So I'll tell you the question. This is the question. Okay. So keep that in mind. You need to integrate. It is integral x raised to n dx is x raised to, I'll write it one more time, x raised to n dx is x raised to n plus 1 by n plus 1. I'll put you the previous, I'll put the previous question here. This is the question. They say force is equal to 3x square plus 2x raised to 1 plus 4. 4 means 4 into 1. That 1 may be written as x raised to 0. Because any number raised to 0 is 1, right? Correct. Oh no, look at this. You know, this is what? They have given a function. 3x square plus 2x raised to 1 plus 4. But I need some sort of x there. So I am putting x to the power 0. Now, I'm sure that this is what? This is a variable force. Variable force, right? How do I know? Because there are x's in it, no? X, x values are in it. So, I can use this equation to find the work done. The question is to find the work done. 3x square plus 2x raised to 1 plus 4x raised to 0. This is my f into dx. I said integral f dx. Work done is what did I say just now? Integral f dx. Look at this blue circle. That f is this blue circle. I am putting it here. 3x square plus 2x raised to 1, 1, 1 plus 4x raised to 0 into dx. So let us integrate it one by one. You know, 3. 3 is a constant. I don't touch it. What is the integration of x raised to 2? Tell me x raised to n is x raised to n plus 1 by n plus 1. Tell me, Kriti, x raised to 2 plus 1 by 2 plus 1. Have you know? Have you know? Sit properly. X raised to 2 plus 1 by 2 plus 1. Correct. So it is x raised to 2 plus 1 by 2 plus 1. 3 by 3. Right. Ah, ah, you can cut 3 and 3. After the class, after the class, 2 into. What is integration of x raised to 1? Ah, x raised to 1 plus 1 by 1 plus 1. Plus ah, 2 and 2 are cutting. Right. 4 into. What is integral of x raised to 0? x raised to 1 by 1. All right. So I have my final equation. 
x cube plus x square plus 4x. All right. They might also say you were going from x is equal to 0 to x is equal to 2. Then you will put lower limit 0, upper limit 2. I will tell you the meaning of it. Lower limit 0, upper limit 2. First give the upper limit to these variables. Minus lower limit to the variables. Again, tell me again. Tell me again. First upper limit to the variables. Minus lower limit of the variables. Now you'll see this quite often now. You know, I'll tell you what. This is 2 cube in place of x. I put 2. 2 cube plus. In place of x. Tell me, Garnik. This is 2 square plus. Ah, this is 4 into 2. Okay. That is minus. You can put the lower limit. Okay. In place of x, you put 0, right? Ah, 0 cube plus. Then 0 square plus 4 into 0. Got it. So what will you get now finally? 2 cube is 8 plus 2 square is 4 plus 4 into 2 is 8. This is all 0, right? Okay, that's all 0. So finally you get 8 plus 4, 12. 12 plus 8 is 20 joules will be the final answer. Actually, it's an advanced question, but this will come for sure. It's so important. All right. Oh, yeah, yeah. sure, sure. We'll do it again. Okay, so this is what it is work done for a variable force. Work done for variable force, we have an equation like this. Integral f dx, integral f dx, integral f dx. Instead of f into d, f dot d, we take it as integral f dx. Why is it so? We will see that in the next class. Okay, so just know that it is integral f dx. All right, integral f dx. So this is my question, a force, this is my question. A force of f is equal to 3x square plus 2x raised to 1 plus 4, 4 newton. This is the force. Moves a body, moves a body from, moves a body from x is equal to 0 to x is equal to 2. Find the work. This is the previous question. x equal to 0 to x equal to 2. The locations are 0 and 2. Initial location, you were at 0. Final location, you are at 2. Got it? I am sure that this is a variable force. How do I know? Because there are x's in it. No? X, 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 x everywhere. In place of x, you won't be given time. Okay, time. And it is time dependent. Time dependent is very, very complicated to do. All right. And x is the only possibility. This itself is a difficult question. All right. X is location. The location. Like I said, if you are in this room, you can write 3 into this room square plus, 2 into this room raised to 1 plus, 4 into nothing is there, right? Okay, that this room raised to 0. If you are in the next room, 3 into that room square plus, that location, that coordinate, that's called coordinate, x equal to 0, x equal to 1, x equal to 2, x equal to 3, x equal to 4, etc., etc., right? It is because basically it is position dependent. If I stand here, one force. If I stand here, another force. If I stand here, another force. Why? Because the force depends on the position I'm in. Right. Okay, that is the meaning of it. Imagine. Ima because when the force is variable, that's what I said. The answer to this question we will see in the next class only. When the force value is changing, you can't simply say F into D. You, you're saying like you can put 0 first, then 2 first, right? Then take the difference. That, is, that won't work. Because the change is continuous. Change is continuously happening. Force is what? You know, it is 0, you put 0, then 0 0.1, 0 0.2, 0 0.3, until 2, you can have infinite numbers, right? Between 0, x equal to 0 and x equal to 2, how many numbers are there? Don't say 0, 1, 2 alone. There are how many? 0, 0 0.1, 0 0.2, 0 0.3, etc. Between 0 and 0 0.1, 0 0.01, 0 0.02, 0 0.03, between 0 and 0 0.01, 0 0.001, understood? That is when, like 300 years back, Newton and Leibniz came up with the idea of calculus. Actually, you can't understand the depth of this branch of mathematics now. But next year, you will learn it, then you'll understand. All right. This is so helpful in understanding so many phenomena in physics and chemistry. All right. Just making things very easy for us. In fact, this might look difficult in the beginning, but as you go deeper, you know, you will find it really easy. Mathematical treatments will be very easy. Understood. So, in fact, Newton and Leibniz devised this branch of mathematics. They were actually physicists and they brought this branch of mathematics just to make these things easier. 
Understood. You can have a concrete idea of things you can imagine, you can visualize. See, I need to visualize something. Now I have to put it on paper, no? That's what. So that is, we are doing it with the help of these mathematical tools, integration and differentiation. All right. Like I said, if you want to find the mass of Pacific Ocean, how do we do that? You take a cup of water from Pacific Ocean, find its mass, integrate it over the volume of Pacific Ocean. You will get the whole mass. Integration will help you. Or if you want to find the mass of Mount Everest, take a small piece of rock from it. Find its mass. Integration. Do integration. That will help you. Understood. Understood. It's, it's got a lot of applications. For example, I'll tell you, uh, a couple of years back, like this, there is this thing called, in calculus, there is this thing called differential equations. And second year, you'll learn differential equations. And people are asking, what is the use of learning differential equations? You know, the transformation from 3G to 4G. 3G, no, now it is 5G here in Qatar. 3G to 4G, that took a roadblock, that hit a roadblock. It took around five to six years because of the inability to solve a particular differential equation. Once that differential equation was solved, that was done by a group of scientists from Switzerland. And once that was done, the transformation was very easy. All right. All these things have mathematical applications. Understood. Everything, every single thing you see, understood. It all depends on what? The latest, what do you call? Data analytics and all, no? Mathematical modeling, everything, everything. Okay, everything is working. Or even the future jobs, everything. is heavily dependent on all these things. The algorithms, right? Okay, right. That is why everyone learns this. You know, even the commercial students have to learn this, this part of mathematics. Okay, it is so beautiful as well. As you go, as you dive deeper into this, you'll understand. Okay, ask, ask, ask. ask. Ah, tell me. Tell me. Huh? No, no, no. Sorry? Sinkholes. After the class. I haven't heard of it. No. Okay. Right. So so look at this. This is how I do it. Look at this. Just just let's let me just complete this. Work done is equal to integral F dx. Integral F dx. From which location to which location? Zero to two here, right? Now, what is the CF? Look at this blue circle. This is EF. Blue circle. This is blue circle. I'm going to replace that. Okay. What is that blue circle? 3x square plus, tell me, 2x raised to 1 plus. And for my, for my easiness, I'm writing it as 4x raised to 0. I just replace that blue circle with that value into dx is still there. Integration is still there. 0 to 2. Correct. 1 by 1, you got to integrate. 3 comes out, it is constant, right? What is the integration of x square? x cube over 3, right? Plus 2 into, what is the integration of x square, x raised to 1? x square by 2, plus 4 into, what is the integration of x raised to 0? x raised to 1 by 1. Okay, so cut them out, 3, 3 cut, 2, 2 cut. You get x cube plus x square plus, 4x raised to 1 from lower limit 0, upper limit 2. Okay, I don't bother to put the lower limit. Anyway, it's 0, right? Okay, if it is 1, you have to put. Got it? Or let us not make things confusing. Let's put it anyway. Upper limit I'm putting, you know, this is 2 cube plus. This is 2 square plus 4 into 2. This is upper limit minus. Lower limit is what? You put 0 in here, right? 0 cube plus 0 square plus 4 into 0. Anyways, that's going to be 0. So I don't care. So 8 plus 2 square is 4 plus 8. That is going to make it 20 joules. Now, I integral same because integration has been performed. Integration is done. That is when you remove that symbol. Integration is done at this step. That is how you got this, right? No, no, dx is also go, gone because this, these two guys come together. No, once you have performed that operation, when this guy is gone, that guy is also gone. They're going together. That's what I said. You are integrating with respect to dx because later on in higher classes, you will integrate, integrate this. You will have techniques to integrate this with respect to y also. Y is another variable. You can have different directions, no? X. This is mathematics. 
integration you are basically but this is this is not as tough as you think it's easy once you have no no yeah which number which number the law limit and upper limit law limit limit to what that is what they give if they give you have to do it if they give the limit they will give they are saying like you were going from one location to another that's it so you put your limit initial position you put your final position for example it's just imagine i am trying to let me just put this uh, question in a physical condition just this is i'm just giving i'm just pushing a car i'm just pushing a car this is a car okay and this is the force i'm giving the same force 3x square plus 2x raised to 1 plus 4x raised to 0 i'm starting from there the car was at x equal to 3 okay x equal to 3 i pushed it pushed it pushed it till where the car went to this is 3 this is 4 5 6 7 x equal to 7 i can find the work done in pushing the car from x equal to 3 to x equal to 7 understood or from x the building of xl to the souk purjan markers understood i can find the work done over this like distance how just do this is perform this mathematical step and put the limits lower limit is xl upper limit is where did you reach the furjan markets understood you put those limits solve it you will get the work done i did in pushing the car over this distance got it which one limit they will give you they will give you that means they are limiting conditions you are putting so they tell you where you are starting from and they they will tell you where you are ending up ending up at got it so it's all given it's a preset condition you are starting from this location to that location the question is to find how much of work was done in the process got it got it for example just imagine you had one bad day and your car has a breakdown and then you have to push it from here to your home then what you are doing work right you are doing work right so you are doing a variable work very very variable force you are giving variable because you cannot be you cannot apply the same force throughout you may be tired in the end you will change the force you apply right correct maybe in the first 10 meters you will be strong enough to push it stronger maybe 10 meters down 10 minutes 10 minutes down you will be tired you will push little like lighter then what again your force will keep decreasing because as you are getting tired you can give less force right yes, correct or will you keep pushing till the end with the same force no, no. you can't do it yes, unless you are a superhuman right okay so yes. it is it is dependent on it is dependent on the location so in the first 10 minutes maybe i'll be able to push with say very very large force but as i go i'll get tired i'll slow down a bit i'll give lesser force lesser force lesser force by the time i reach i may fall down understood so it's like a continuously changing force correct that is why that is where this comes to help you got it so you'll put the limits where you started pushing your car from here and you push till where your home understood so when you integrate you are integrating from excel to home got it that's it those limits are as per the conditions given so when i give you the question i'll give you the conditions got it that's it Yeah, obviously, energy gets wasted, right? But what else you can do then? If your car has a breakdown, then what else you do? That's what. <laughs> okay, right. Okay, anyway, okay, let's get back to this. Right, write this question. Write this question. Okay, right. Hope all of you understood this. Everyone online, just write a question. Uh, write a question. A force of. A force of. F is equal to. A force of F is equal to 3x square plus 2x raised to 1 plus 4. Moves a body from x equal to 0 to x equal to 2. x equal to 0 to x equal to 2. Find the work done. I can tell you another situation. Imagine a rocket is going up. Rocket, rocket. Okay. There are multi-stage rockets. Okay. As you go up, the fuel is burned, right? So it can move faster now. That force is variable. That force is variable. 
because initial acceleration will be different from final acceleration. That's a changing force. Yeah, integration for calculating. Why? This is so. This is so beautiful. Yeah. That's what I. I'll, I'll tell you one thing. I have one thing. I a force of a force of three x square plus two x raised to one plus four newton displaces a body from x equal to zero to x equal. To. Find the work done. Write this. Work done is equal to integral f dx. That is the standard equation for work done. All of you online, do you follow? Okay, right. So integral f dx. Integral f dx. So integral, what are you going to put for f? Look at this yellow circle and tell me that is my f. So this is my f. I'm going to put, ah, blue circle, sorry. Blue circle. Sorry, sorry, sorry. Blue circle. 3x square plus this is 2x raised to 1 plus that 4. I don't like to keep it alone. It is 4x raised to 0. I'm putting an x raised to 0 next to it. This is my f into dx. And you are starting from 0. You are going up until 2. Right. Okay. So once the integration is performed, never look for this integration symbol and dx again. All right. Okay. So let us do the integration carefully. Which one? A, a, huh? Write this. Integral x raised to n dx. Thanks for asking. That is x raised to n plus 1 over n plus 1. n plus 1 over n plus 1. X raised to n plus 1 by n plus 1. Oh, really ah, x raised to n plus 1 by n plus 1. Ah, right. First is what? You will keep this 3 out. 3 is a constant. What is the integration of x square? x cube by 3. Ah, plus 2 into, I will keep that 2 out of integration. Integral of x raised to 1 is x square by 2 plus 4 into x raised to 0's integration is x raised to 1 by 1. So 3 and 3 are getting cut. 2 and 2 are cut. So finally, I am writing it one last time. x cube plus x square plus 4x starting at 0, ending at 2. So finally, put the value 2 cube plus in place of x put 2, 2 cube plus this is 2 square plus 4 into 2. No, 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 no need. So 0 minus the lower limit is it's all 0. You can put 0 cube plus 0 square plus 4 into 0. That's all zeros, right? So 2 cube is 8. 2 into 2 into 2, 8. 2 square is 4. Plus 4 into 2 is 8. 8 plus 4 is 12. 12 plus 8 is 20 joules. 20 joules will be the work done. 20 joules will be the work done. Got it, all of you? Okay, so this is what we learned so far. The dot product, we started off with scalar product or dot product. It is called scalar product because the answer is a scalar quantity. All right, A dot B is defined as mod A, mod B, cos theta, right? And if you want to find angle theta, cos inverse A dot B by mod A, mod B. Cos inverse A dot B by mod A, mod B. Then I told you if two vectors are perpendicular, their dot product must be equal to zero, right? You can check for perpendicularity that way. All right. Then we did a lot of questions on it. And then work done. Work done, I told you, the original equation is force into displacement, but we modify it by taking the relevant component of force. Relevant component is cos theta. F cos theta into D, that makes it F dot D. Work done is F dot D. The unit is joule. SI unit is joule. CGS unit is ergs. 1 joule is 10 raised to 7 ergs. Then we learn about different cases. Theta can be in between 0 and 90, in between 90 and 180, and exactly 90. Got it? 0 and 9. This is the, theta is acute, 
cos theta is positive, then work done will be positive. Regular cases, work body pushed, body pulled, all those cases, work done is positive. And work done is negative when theta is in between 0 and 180, 90 and 180, obtuse angles. All right, work done by friction here, work done by gravity on a body moving up, all these cases theta will be 180, got it. And work done can be 0 as well, provided theta is 90. For example, the centripetal force case, the force is acting to the center and displacement is tangential. And as you can see, the angle is 90 degree, right? Work done will be zero. This is a standalone question also. Show that work done by centripetal force is zero. It's a two mark question. Only three steps. All right, draw the figure and write it. Okay. Then I told you about this work done by variable force. Variable force means a force that keeps changing. Okay, a force that keeps changing from place to place. Got it. In that case, we use integration FTX. Integration is similar to summation. All right. It's similar to summation itself. For example, when you look at the sky, the number of stars cannot be counted, right? They are so close that that looks like a continuous distribution. All right. So you take a small piece of it, you better integrate it. Got it. Right. So when you have like continuous distributions, you always go for integration. All right. When you know the small thing, you can find the whole thing. When you know the cu small cup of water from Pacific Ocean, you can integrate it to get the whole mass of Pacific Ocean. All right. Integration will help you in that regard. Right. Anyway, this is how you do it. Integration of x raised to n dx is x raised to n plus 1 by n plus 1. And we did this integration, the work done. You give the upper limit first, then the lower limit, then the work done will be the difference of them. Got it? Now, next part, look at this. Next part is about energy and power. Last part is about collisions. Mm -hmm. Couple of sessions, we'll finish this chapter. Okay. So, shall we find a further? Mm -hmm.